Good morning. You can do better than that. Good morning. All right, let's give Dr. Francis Oliver, David Francis Oliver, another round of applause, our organist. We are here for a very special occasion today. We are here to honor our student leaders. One of the beautiful things about Morehouse College is how we develop our student leaders, and we're going to see a little bit of that today in this SGA Crown Forum. We are going to inaugurate the radical administration of our SGA leaders for the 2018-2019 year. And before we do that, we're going to have an evocation from Minister Jerikis Collins, class of 19, the SGA chaplain. So at this time, we'll hear the evocation from Jerikis and enjoy. Thank you. Let us bow for prayer. Amazing grace will always be my song of praise, for it has brought me great liberty. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, our God. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thou compassion fail not. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto we. God of our weary years, the God who have brought us a mighty long way, we are in sacred space experiencing the ever abundant, never ending, and always abounding faithful grace of God. The Holy Writ declares that God, your grace is indeed sufficient. We can testify today that your grace has been sufficient. We thank you for grace, the grace that has pushed us through many dangers, toils, and snares. Grace that paid the tuition. Grace that encouraged us when we felt hopeless, helpless, and all alone. We thank you, dear God, for your grace that empowers us to be bold, to be brave, and to be our true selves. As we are assembled here, celebrating a new year of new student leaders, we pray, dear God, that you give us a grace that will make us smile when we don't want to smile. A grace that will make people love us and not just like us. A grace that will grant us tolerance and a grace that surpasses all understanding. Help us to realize why we have been created. Help us to make sense of a life, ultimately to make a difference and be the change we wish to see in the world. As we conclude our request, dear master, certainly our prayer follows the word of the old hymn writer, do Lord, do remember us. We give you all praise and adoration we are awaiting our triumphant becoming, knowing that if you have begun a good work in us, you will bring it unto completion. To God be glory, honor, and praise. In Christ I pray, in your name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Good morning. It is my pleasure to give the oath of office to all officers of the SGA this morning. Will all officers of the SGA please stand? Please raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state, I, I state your name. As an officer of the student body of Morehouse College, assuming the office of state your position. 
do swear that I will radically fulfill the duties of this office as provided in the Student Government Association Constitution and Bylaws. I will strive to establish representative government. Maintain academic freedom. And defend the rights of students. I will work toward the strengthening of the cooperation between the student body, faculty, staff, and administration. While serving this academic year, I plan to maintain my commitment to leadership. And service while improve my academic standing. And service while I improve my academic standing. With these thoughts in mind, with these thoughts in mind, I shall set as my final goal. I shall set as my final goal to build on the legacy and strengthen the brand of Morehouse College. To build on the legacy and strengthen the brand of Morehouse College. I so affirm. Congratulations, gentlemen. Go ahead and clap. It will be my pleasure to serve with you, and I ask you to represent us all well. Thank you. Good morning, Morehouse College. Y'all know I need way more energy than that. Good morning, Morehouse College. Good morning. My name is Quentin Pachel. I'm a graduating senior. And I have the pleasure of serving as your 87th Student Government Association president. At this time, I would also like to thank our colleagues from the Spelman College Student Government Association, as well as other officers represented here today for your attendance. And furthermore, I would like to say how much of a pleasure it is to stand before you all. In defining what it means to be a man of Morehouse, we ask the students of this college to be radical thinkers. Not radical to the left or radical to the right, but radical in a mathematical sense. To be able to get down to the root of a thing. It is from the immortal teachings of former president, Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays, that we have created a vision for the scholars who choose to grow through this beloved institution. With that being said, we understand that as the years go on, the branches of this big and beautiful tree grow further and further from the roots from which they came. With the purpose of developing 21st century leaders who are both conscious of their geographical location in the timeline of our history as well as their roles as future leaders, this speech will be entitled, How to be Radical in the Year 2018. At its foundation, we must say that step one to this process is to first know yourself, know your worth, ladies and gentlemen. For a man that has no understanding of self has no purpose. And a man that has no purpose has no reason to change the world. This requires the highest degree of self-awareness and introspection. To answer your own question as to why you do the things that you do puts the air into your lungs and gives you reason to breathe, to develop your own personal mission, to define your own existence as a captain of your soul. It is said that the most frightening thing in this country is a determined black man. And by contrast, the least frightening thing is a black man that knows nothing. Step two, on this journey to be a radical thinker is to fall down 
and learn to never fall down again. Brothers, I must warn you that failure is inevitable, but it is not the fall itself that defines the individual, but what they do after they have fallen. Simply put, if you have never failed, you'll never know what it feels like, and when it finally does happen, you won't be prepared to bounce back. Be comfortable with failing and knowing that it is not the end of your journey as a man, but confuse me not, failure is not the objective. But we must learn from whatever perceived failures that we face because the worst thing that we can do is make the same mistake twice, repeat the same cycle, walk down the same wrong path over and over and over and expect anything differently to happen. Which brings me to my next point. Step three and how to be radical in the year 2018. We must do what has never been done before. We must be extreme. We must inspire the next to inspire the next. We must breathe newness into this land of traditional and conservative. 151 years ago, it was a radical idea to gather simply 10 black men into a room. We took that itself to an extreme and created what is now Morehouse College. You must develop a hunger for making things that are good, great, and things that are already great, spectacular. Innovation must be the lifeblood of this institution. The energy of creativity should pump through the veins of each and every one of our students. This is how we carry the name of Morehouse College further than it's ever been before. Step four which may be the most important step of them all. Ladies and gentlemen, we must stand for something. While many people have mixed feelings about the whole Colin Kaepernick Nike advertisement, and whether or not you agree with the advertisements, the message was clear. Stand for something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Somewhere along the way, we confused our five wells. We thought that being well-dressed meant to be well-hidden. We mistook well-spoken for well-silenced. This world is haunted by people who had wished that they had spoken up. Even in this, we must understand that to be well-spoken does not mean to over-articulate or use words with four and five syllables, but to be well-spoken means to speak up when something needs to be said, speak up when something needs to be heard, and right now is always the perfect time to speak up. As 21st century leaders, we must be radical thinkers by nature so that we can grow exponentially. As we stand for something, we must also stand together. And so in finishing on this note, in standing together, we must be conscious of our role in this political system. And that if we do in fact wish to seek change in this world, ladies and gentlemen, simply put, we must register to vote. There are several pivotal races that are happening in this country right now that require our civic duty to use our voice in this political system. Without endorsing any specific candidates, I must tell you that it is important that we, as students at Morehouse College, register to vote in the state of Georgia. Brothers, did you know that you can register to vote using your dorm room? And understanding the impact that we have as an institution, we have the power to change the world ourselves. After this ceremony, ladies and gentlemen, there will be representatives in the lobby who will be able to aid you in registering to vote. As we know that right now is the most important time than ever. Men of Morehouse, it is finally our opportunity to be radical. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Martin Luther King Jr. International Chapel Gospel Choir.
problem. I put it all in his head. I know that he can solve them. I put it all in his head. This and that. I put it all in his head. He can handle it. That's a fact. I put it all in his head. No matter how great or small, he's a master of them all. I put it all. Let's give it up for the Martin Luther King Jr. International Chapel Gospel Choir. Under the direction of one of our SG advisors, Elder Kimberly Brown. Brothers, my name is Wendell Shelby Wallace, and I have the pleasure of serving as your 87th Student Government Association Vice President and 89th President of the Student Senate. In my president's eagerness to deliver his address, we neglected to do one thing, but that's why I'm here as his vice president, to back him up. Can I have the gentleman of the executive branch to please stand and be recognized at this time? Let's give it up for him. You may be seated. And of course, my, one of my favorite branches, the Student Senate, would you please stand and be recognized at this time? Thank you. So, I'm very brief. I like to be concise in my speaking. That way the, the point can be heard clear. So, I'm going to speak to you today about something very simple, and it's the radical equation. So, my first class here at Morehouse College was actually pre-calculus, um, and it was a course with Dr. Rudy Horn. I took that class, I walked on the first day, there was a pretest that counted as a grade, and I dropped the class the same day. But when I re-enrolled in pre-calculus, I found one thing to be very challenging. And it's something that should have been simple, but it was the order of operations, and most importantly, one portion of the order of operations, and that was the radical. The radical is not directly mentioned in Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally. So one of the first things I found difficulty in was figuring out where in the operations it fell. But one of the things that I realized, it did not matter. Yes, it did. It was part of exponentials. But the most important thing of it was, it did not matter where it fell. The thing that mattered most to me is that it was challenging. 
So my first point to you, as the radical administration, our job is to challenge the order of operations, the status quo. Point number two, as we journey through this radical administration, as radicals, we have to understand our purpose. Radicals, in the mathematical sense, do not bring power into the equation. They do not bring clout into the equation, but rather they remove existing powers. I'll say that again. Radicals are not used in the equation to bring powers, but rather to remove existing powers. These existing powers, we all know brothers very well, homophobia, xenophobia, misogyny, all the things that we talk about every single day that should not exist on this campus. This administration's job, our administration's job, which you all are a part of, is to remove these negative powers. The third point I deliver to you is that the square root of zero is always zero. So if you bring nothing into the equation, if you put nothing on the inside of the radical, you can't expect to get anything out of this experience. This administration is not built on resume building. This administration is not built on titles, but this administration is built on community of operations. Point number four, this is something I quickly learned when dealing with the art of operations. Negatives can go in front of the radical, but negatives can never go on the inside of the radical. This administration similarly does not accept negatives on the inside of the radical. Simply put, if, you, if there's a problem with negativity, it will be removed. That is our job as the radical administration. That means we need working Wi-Fi, we need safe and sanitary living conditions, we need edible food inside of the cafeteria, we need spaces on this campus where we can study, we need friendly faculty and staff amongst us. And it's here, but we wanna make sure as this administration that we don't overpower the positive by using the negative. This is my last and my final point. And I want you brothers to hear this very clearly. Division, fractions, decimals, anything partial causes challenges to the radical. It's very difficult to solve a radical, if any of you tried to work one out, it's very difficult to solve it if there's a fraction on the inside. Again, I submit to you that there cannot be the division amongst this house. There cannot be division amongst this administration. There can't be any negatives on the inside of this administration. And most certainly, you have to bring something into the radical to expect to get something out of the radical. Ladies and gentlemen, I have introduced to you the simple math of the radical equation. At this time, again, you will hear from the Martin Luther King Jr. International Chapel as they bring to us a selection, There Is No Way.
Hello, my name is Julian Gaines. I am a senior business administration major concentrating in marketing, double minor in econ and sales from Charlotte, North Carolina. Your Chief Justice of the Honor and Conduct Review Board. First off, I want to acknowledge our advisory council for this year. Mr. Kevin Booker, Mr. Damon Johnson, Mr. Nathan Alexander, Mr. Derek Bryan, uh, Mrs. K Kimberly Brown, Dr. Elia Davis, Dr. Jan Adams, and Mr. Paul Smith. Also, may I ask that our guests from Spelman College please stand and be recognized. We appreciate your support of our Student Government Association. And finally, before I get into my speech, will the judicial branch please stand to be recognized? <laughs> the root of a thing. So these past few weeks, I've thought, what do we as developing scholars need to get down to the root of? And I figured it would be nice if I took this time to talk to you specifically about the root of successful leadership, the root of a prosperous life, or the root of a healthy relationship. But the reality is the root of a thing, or better yet, the root of everything, comes down to you and who you are as a person, your character. It is the person I know each and every one of you are and strive to be, someone who leads with courage, values honesty, embraces diversity, accepts responsibility, chooses civility, and acts with integrity. Someone who, despite their own imperfections and mistakes, decide to live and create a life better than the one that existed yesterday. Someone who recognizes that everyone is unique and celebrates the, different, the differences brought to the table. Who consciously chooses courage over comfort, chooses what is right over what is fun, fast, or easy, and chooses to practice their own core values rather than simply profess them. Now, this may seem like very high expectations, but my question is, why aren't your expectations higher? Is it too much to hold yourself to a higher standard even when most choose not to? Is it too much to step up to complete a task you'll never be acknowledged for? Or is it too much to simply decide to put the time and effort into doing the work instead of finding a way to finesse around it? Because what you have to understand is not about how the collective influence how you think and operate, but just the opposite. Imagine an entire organization influenced by how you decide to think. From now on, you must watch your thoughts, for they become your words. And you must watch your words, be become, for they become your actions. You must watch your actions for they become your habits. And brothers, you must watch your habits because they become your character. Your character can define your success as well as your failures and will shape the environment around you. For your sake and the world's sake, I ask that you find the root of your character and continue to make an impact on this world. Thank you. Now we will have the Martin Luther King Jr. International Choir uh, come up one more time.
if you don't mind standing and linking arms.